Hello guys, welcome to the new video lesson. Dilip Purushottam Chitre was a bilingual writer writing in Marathi and English, best known for his translations and revival of the Marathi Bhakti poet Tukaram. Even though a writer, translator, filmmaker and teacher, his most important contribution was examination of language and its role in building bridges. According to Chitri, creative writing is an intimate dialogue between writer and reader, both of whom are imaginary to each other. Like any poet who honestly dives into this inner world, Chitri felt and practiced a fierce commitment to truth. Chitri was a poet who was often grappled with experience of uncertainty and loss, both in real life and his poetry. Emotionally mocked, and marred by the untimely death of his son. His poems not only dwell on trauma, but also a need to make peace with it. So poetry becomes a ground for philosophical reckoning with the vagaries of life. Now let's have a look at the poem, The House of My Childhood. In the poem, the poet the Lipchitri narrates how the house on the hilltop where he lived during his childhood changed following the demise, the death of his grandmother. Now here is the first stanza. The house of my childhood stood empty on a grey hill, all its furniture gone, except my grandmother's grindstone and the brass figurines of her gods. The speaker goes down the memory lane, recollecting his ancestral house, the place where he spent his childhood, the nest of his memories. The house, now it remained empty and forsaken with all the furniture removed. There is nothing, it's all desolate. The only things of the past that continued to remain there were the brass statues of her deities, the gods, and a grinding stone obviously the symbol of prayers and domestic kitchen work. Now you can see the speaker reminiscent of the life that he used to have there in this place. After the death of all birds, bird cries still fill the mind. After the city's erasure, a blur that still peoples the air in the colorless crack that comes before morning. In a place where nobody can sing, words distribute their silence among intricately clustered glyphs. This is the second stanza where he continues to say that nothing remained except for the grinding stone and the brass statues of God that she used to worship. The speaker remembers how in this house he used to wake up with the birds chirping and singing, but those bird cries are now good old memories. They won't be real, not anymore. He could not but wonder how the bird cries had stopped. The poet recalled painfully, poignantly, how he used to listen to their chirping as a child when the house was full of life. All those loved ones who used to be with him are not with him anymore. The times have changed, the lives have changed, but still the memories of people, things, incidents, events, love, everything reappears, reoccurs, where? In his mind. Again, as though they were blurred images, not clear, not concrete, yet they remain in him. So those memories, they remain in him. The morning cracks that he describes, they are colorless, they are gray now. Nothing is left to add color and charm to life her. Yeah, this has become a place where nobody sings, nobody talks, nobody exists. The place is deserted now, forlorn, desolate. None to convey his emotions, to share his happiness and converse even a few words. Words seem silent and useless. Among the old paintings, and sculptures. Let's look at the last stanza. My grandmother's voice shivers on a bare branch. I toddle around the empty house. Spring and summer are both gone, leaving an elderly infant to explore the rooms of age. Yes, guys. Now he continues to look at the house. The poet feels that the grandmother's voice is coming from the branch of a tree. Although the house was now deserted, 
the poet could not resist the urge to go around. He was, he's moving, he's groping here and there and exploring all the rooms. His attachment for the house, it's evident in the last stanza. Spring and summer, what's special about these two seasons? They're two favorite seasons for a child and evokes a lot of mirth, happiness, freshness and playfulness in a child. A child enjoys a feast of colors, flowers and fruits in the spring season and a child enjoys a lot during his long summer holidays. As a child grows up, this innocence energy and cheerfulness it leaves him owing to the fret and fever of life works responsibilities duties and sorrows as we know that they come up in one's life deprives him of this summer and spring and what the speaker searching for in the empty rooms he might be frantically searching for his lost childhood his lost memories like an infant toddling around as if he's seeing everything around for the first time in his life. From the beginning to the end of the poet, the poet clearly brought the theme of nostalgia. He misses the entire happiness of his childhood. Quite natural. He toddles around the house and he remembers the same walk, the same play, the same movement when he played with his fellow beings. Now, there is only emptiness, colorless memories, grandmother's grindstone and brass figurines. The poem brings out the theme of a rural house even, household activities, activities that used to take place within a rural rustic village home of the olden days and it's contrasted with the modern lifestyle. The brass figurines shows that they worship they, all of them including grandmother, worshipped regularly to please their deities. So the deities were kept in their house very preciously. The brass medal gives the idea that they don't want to disfigure it. They are indispensable to spirituality. But modern generation is less spiritual. That's why nobody took the brass figurines to their new venues and homes. The passage of time. That's the next thematic concern. The poet looks at time as the one who took away all his childhood memories. Even time had taken away the summer and spring with him, leaving the elderly infant. He is now big, he is grown up, he is elderly, but now he's an infant in the vastness, in the realms of his memories. So he is an elderly infant to toddle around the house to find the lost ages. So guys, that was a nostalgic, heart-touching poem by Dilip Chitra, which tells its readers that no matter how old you become, you will always cherish the reminiscences of your childhood. As in the lines of Kamla Das, that woman died, the house withdrew into silence. I lived in such a house and was proud and loved. Today, I beg at strangers' doors to receive love at least in small change. Quotation from Kamla Das's great nostalgic poem, My Grandmother's House. Thank you all for watching. I will see you in the next video lesson. Till then, enjoy your learning.